Evolutionists say that uh, the Earth is billions of years old, that the wet mud laid down and became sedimentary layers, as we see in this picture here, that these layers, hundreds and hundreds of them, were laid down one at a time, slowly and gradually, over a long period of time. We want to see, did it actually take millions of years for all these rock layers to form? Because I say no. I say that all of them formed in only one year, deposited by Noah's flood. So which one of us is right? Well, let's take a little look. This is a photograph of the south wall of the Grand Canyon taken just after sunrise. Below, we see the Colorado River here, and exposed here, we see hundreds of dried out mud layers called sedimentary rock, and many of them contain fossils. And when evolutionists show you pictures like this, they say, oh, these are, well, layers laid down by individual floods over a very long period of time. So supposedly, according to evolutionists, one layer of wet mud was laid down, then another layer was laid down later. And evolutionists say that this represents 500 million years of uh, accumulated time. Now, when you take a look at these layers, I would admit that many times they, they look flat, as you see here. However, the truth is that they aren't flat in some places. Some are absolutely flat. Uh, and there's, well, one layer directly on top of another. However, if you go to the north side on the North Kaibab Trail, you can go up the trail and see a wall where there's a round area of one kind of dried out mud, sedimentary rock. Then there's a sort of a donut, a bagel going around that of a different kind of sedimentary rock. And around the bagel, around the donut, is the same kind of sedimentary rock that's in the middle. There are places where the layers actually turn and meet each other at 90 degrees. There are many discrepancies to this. It only looks plausible when you see it from a long distance away, which we do here. But I have a question. Evolutionists say that each of these layers was laid down one at a time, slowly and gradually over a long period of time. Now, if that were true, if these layers are supposed to be different ages, different times, accumulations slowly and gradually, then please explain to me this. Why are there no soil horizons between the rock layers? I mean, think with me. If each layer was laid down one at a time, slowly and gradually, each layer would have been exposed for a certain amount of time, whatever that might be. But for a certain amount of time, it would have been exposed. And so why are there no soil horizons between these rock layers? Why are there no V-shaped erosion marks in the layers? I mean, if the layers have been exposed for any period of time, some of the rock should have then gone back to soil. And as rain fell on them, there should be a V-shaped erosion mark cut into them, which would be preserved when the next layer of mud came in on top. Why are there no animal holes in those layers? Why are there no root holes in those layers? You see, in science, a scientist always asks two questions. What's there and what's not? And what's not is often more important than what's there. And when we take a look at the Grand Canyon, and we realize that there's 160 million years of layers missing out of the 500 that evolutionists claim to be there, when we see that the layers are actually not flat, one on top of the other, but often curving and meeting each other at 90 degrees, the discrepancies that we see, when we take a look at the evidence that's not there, no soil horizons, no V-shaped erosion marks, no animal holes, no road tools, we can actually see that those layers are simply laid down by Noah's flood all at one time, and that's why all of this information is missing. So remember that what's missing is often more important than what's there. And those layers were simply laid down in one year by a great flood. It didn't take millions of years for the Grand Canyon to form. It formed in only one year.